Are the banks priced down who's next? And are we representative is on that? <laughs> So we are the price gouging locator named I pay you what? My name is William White. I'm Ramsey Ortiz. Yes, and I make things, say this you make things make sense. Mark was also on our team. He left us, I'm not sure why, but he makes things better apparently. And Sophia keeps us centered. So if we're not centered today, it's because she's not here. So so every single day, events such as natural disasters create disruptions in the market that cause pricing to vary, sometimes resulting in price gouging. This creates pain for consumers. It creates a lot of division between businesses and community and individuals, but it also creates a load of paperwork, whether you're trying to submit a claim or whether on you're receiving it in the DOJ and trying to process it. So what I pay what does is it uses social media and people interacting with each other to identify where price gouging may be occurring. We hope to, to discourage and prevent price gouging from occurring in the first place. That's always the first goal. But also drive awareness of the law through that and simplify the DOJ complaint process. So first, discourage and prevent. One of the things we're going to do, you'll see up here on this uh, mock-up, is that the DOJ is saying between 9-1 and 1016. There is a law out there that prevents you from price gouging. Here's the fees for it. And you as a consumer might come in here and say, wow, someone's paying nine bucks for a gallon of gas. That's crazy. Yeah, I saw the same thing. I'm going to report that to the DOJ. And somebody said, I know, I just passed it. There's a better place up the street. So that's just a mock-up of what it might look like. So let's talk a little bit about the DOJ in this. You know, their mission is what's well, stated up here is to monitor businesses, make sure there's enforcement priorities and also make recommendations for changing it. But they can only make recommendations if they actually get data. Right now, on the left is an example of a form you might fill out to submit a claim. There are 8,000 claims to date, just from Hurricane Irma alone. It's 8,000 people filling out something like that. What if they can take an app, like I pay what? Put their complaint, upload their evidence, like nine bucks for gas, ten dollars for gas, solicit with other people's claims, and then send their data, allow the app to also send their personal data to the DOJ directly. And then on the next page, when they go for it, they can recommend this other person who hasn't submitted to the DOJ yet, right here, you go ahead and submit their claim too. What that does is we're allowed to take this check and the open data that we might collect from social media, that we can maybe also integrate with gas money, get some historical pricing data, that can all go into the I pay what app, and we can submit that to the DOJ for people. So business case, we talked about the complaints. We think something like this would definitely cut down the DOJ processing time, because we can aggregate all that data, put it into a dashboard for the DOJ on a timeline basis, and then connect some more cases together. So initially, first year Q1, we want to build the MVP, some basic functionality we've talked about, uh, market it in one city. It may grow organically, but got to start somewhere. By year, by first year Q2, the major thing we'd want to do is actually get agreement from the DOJ that they want to accept data this way, whether that's by email, whether it's input into their form, however it may occur. Then second year, third year, you know, market 100 cities, expand and scale. So what do we need? We need you guys. So if you're a developer, you guys are what actually makes the thing happen. And then we also need somebody who can do natural language query. We also need you to submit your data. Because without consumers actually reporting what's happening to them, they can't help their neighbor out, and their neighbor can't help them out. And lastly, do you have any DOJ connections? That'd be fantastic. <laughs> because it always helps to have all the parties communicating with each other. Any questions? I do have a question for you. So what is the natural language query part of your ask? What is that for? 
So the idea is that we will have a social media listener that is uh, monitoring the social media and, and seeing what people are talking about. People complain on social media, they don't take action and go and submit a complaint. But if the DOJ doesn't have that complaint, they cannot take action on the county. And it's very similar to what you might see a CSR do or like a Salesforce app. There's some pre-built apps out there off the shelf where somebody might sit and a complaint about Verizon and chatting with their friend on Facebook. And right in there, somebody from Verizon pops in and says, hey, I heard you had a complaint about Verizon, how can I help? So leveraging technologies like that. So one of the things that's been obviously happening is malicious use. Yes. How would you go about preventing that? So one of the things that we are trying to do is collect evidence. By uh, get, getting the data from gas body, we're taking the historical data of what the prices were throughout, throughout the time before uh, the price gouging law is in effect. And then with Reveal Model of Mobile, we're uh, getting data to see how many other people may have been affected by that, by that uh, gouging. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Have you given thought to how the app might work in the absence of infrastructure that supports access to social media, a Hurricane Katrina, a Hurricane Irma? How would you be able to serve your public in a workaround way? Um, the, the social media listener, of course, would not be working but we will still be collecting um, the daily prices ahead of, of, of anything that may be happening. We don't know when natural disasters happen. Um, and the other things that help the, the DOJ build their case at the end of the day, because for they are asking the, the consumer to tell you, oh, last week the price was this. No, now we are providing that evidence instead of, of, of uh, you know, instead of just hearsay. Yeah, no, I think it'd be interesting too on your question. Most of what I've observed at least is that normally the complaints come before disaster or after disaster. So the app would still give the capability of, of taking that data in and then submitting it once the internet connection's back up. But obviously it powers out. People probably aren't getting gas anyway, but you know, it just depends on the situation. So it definitely seems to be the case that this would help the consumer. Consumer cut down time in submitting a complaint. Do you think that this would have an impact on how the DOJ would process things as well? We believe it will help in their mission to monitor the questionable business practices because if they they are only uh, using the consumer and if the consumer doesn't know what happened uh, last week but only today they're paying nine dollars then now we're providing that evidence and the saving the priorities we have had several complaints from the same business. Thank <laughs> you.